All right, in this video, I'm gonna really mix it up from what I usually do, and I'm gonna be flashing the BIOS on this Gigabyte Vega 56 card I picked up for $350 Canadian to a Vega 64. You can see I got a few downloads here, the ATI Flash 2.93, a Gigabyte Vega 64 BIOS, and Tech Power Up GPU-Z. So just to show you where I downloaded everything, and I'll throw links in the description, is the download GPU Z, and this is so you can know what type of memory you have in your card. Also on Tech Power Up, I downloaded ATI Flash version 2.93, right there with that download button. And the last thing that I downloaded was the Gigabyte RX Vega 64 BIOS for the gaming OC version. So I have the 56, and I'm gonna flash it to the Vega 64 and it'll explain what you're getting in the BIOS internals. And you just download that as well. And then I dumped everything into a single file folder. Now this method should also be shared with most of the uh, newer AMD cards as well. So the first thing I'm doing here is opening the Tech Power Up GPU Z. So you can see here that I have the Samsung memory and they're all HBM2 for the Vega 56s and Vega 64s. My understanding is you could only flash the Samsung memory. And you can see that it has a 800 megahertz memory clock and you get the graphics BIOS version uh, right there. So before I do anything, I'm gonna save the BIOS. So I'm gonna hit the save button, go to save BIOS, and then I'm gonna save it in the exact same location that everything else is, which is in my Vega flash folder. And I'm just going to rename it to something that'll be easier to identify. In this case, Gigabyte, I don't know, Vega 56 stock BIOS. And I'm going to hit save on that guy. And you can see it there is now in the folder. And just so uh, you're aware, I also put this onto a uh, memory stick. And that's the last thing I need from uh, the GPU Z program. So now I'm going to go into the ATI Win Flash, and you can see I ran as administrator. And you'll see some information about your current BIOS in there, as you can see right there. So what I'm gonna do is load image. I'm gonna select the Vega 64 BIOS I downloaded from Tech Power Up. Once that's done, I'm gonna hit program and big fail system ID mismatch. So it's not gonna let me do it that way, so I'm gonna to have to force this to happen. So what I'm gonna do is create a Windows batch file. The first thing I did was drag the Vega 64 BIOS into the WinZip folder and I renamed it BIOS.ROM just so it's easier to work with. You can in fact rename this whatever you want. It just becomes important when you make your Windows batch file. So I'll open up this text file I created that's gonna be my Windows batch file. You can see it says add echo off, next line CLS, next line echo flashing card zero with bios.rom, dot, dot, dot. Obviously, if you named your bios something else, you'd have to put that there. Uh, next line echo dot, and then CD, C drive, and then you can see this is just the name of the folder that the ATI Flash 2.93 program is in. So Vega BIOS backslash ATI Flash underscore 293 backslash. Next line is AMD VB flash space dash P space zero space dash F space BIOS dot ROM echo dot then space then pause. Now that dash P zero and dash F are important for where your graphics card is located in your machine. And mine's just in the first uh, main PCIe slot. So I saved it as a text document for later use, and then I went back and saved it as uh, biosflash.bat to save it as that Windows batch file, which you can see right there. So I'm gonna open up the Windows batch file, and you'll see that it actually automatically runs, flashes the, the BIOS to the BIOS.ROM I had. It'll tell you to hit any key, and then you restart your computer. So after restarting the computer, you can see that I am now at 944 megahertz for memory. And that's using the GPU Z program that I downloaded earlier. Now if I close that out and look at the AMD software, you can see that the 
GPU is now at 945 megahertz for memory frequency. And I run a quick PC user benchmark. I'm gonna switch to the other camera, 96%, 98%, and 88% for uh, respectively and you can see here that it is recognizing it as a Vega 64 and as a Vega 64 I'm in the 45 45th percentile which is 93.3 overall so it's uh, definitely a Vega 64 but an average Vega 64 so I'm gonna flash it back to a Vega 56 so I'm gonna try to use the AMD program again go run as administrator I'm gonna load image and I'm gonna load the original Vega 56 stock BIOS so hit program and no, it denies me again. Same problem going forward, but now I've already got the Windows batch file set up. So what I'm gonna do is take the Vega 64, which is right there is bios.rom. I'm gonna cut it out of this folder, which is the ATI flash 2.93 folder. I'm just gonna put it back in my generic Vega BIOS folder and I'll call it BIOS 64 just to differentiate it. There we go. Now I'm going to take the stock Vega 56, throw it into the uh, ATI folder, and I'm going to rename that one BIOS.ROM so that when I run my BIOS flash Windows batch file again, it'll identify that as the new BIOS to flash. So again, run that program, it uh, does its thing, flashes the card, tells you hit any key, and then restart your computer. So now that the computer is rebooted, you can see it is definitely back to 800 megahertz for memory clock, indicating that it is once again a Vega 56. I'll open up AMD software. All those numbers are about the same, but that's the one we're looking at right there. So memory back to 800 megahertz as well. I'll put the BIOS flash that I used in, uh, in my website as well, and you can see a link for that in the description. Keep in mind, it is important to know what you've named the BIOS file that you've, uh, you've got here for your ROM file and as well where your GPU is located in your computer. So I'm gonna run a Vega 56 benchmark. So it's at 89%, 97%, and 83%. So a little bit of a drop. But what you can see is that it uh, gets an 88%. So again, it's, it's lower overall, but it's in the 80th percentile as a Vega 56. So what I would say is this card is a very good Vega 56, or it could be an adequate Vega 64. If you're able to flash your card within the ATI WinFlash program and you have a good BIOS, this is actually a really easy thing to do. If you have to force the flash, it is a more involving process overall. But now that I've got my file set up, it's just as easy to flash this card outside of the actual program. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.